Hi, it's John Allen Green here again, Franciscan Hermit from Johannesburg, with my meditation on the fourth Sunday of Lent. In this Sunday we look at the Tree of Death and the Tree of Life. And as an example, we take the tree in Central America and Mexico, where there are 11 known varieties of trees and shrubs that are poisonous to the touch. Their poisons can cause severe discomfort, including itching, painful rash, and other horrible reactions. For one of these trees, however, the Shechem tree, one doesn't have to look far for an antidote. The Shechem tree, which extrudes a poisonous black sap, contains high amounts of urishol, an oil-like substance that is the same active chemical agent as in poison ivy. Have no fear, though. The antidote for the poison comes by way of another tree, which happens to grow right next to the Shechem, often so close that the root systems of the two trees will intertwine with one another. The blistering, rash-like reaction of the skin caused by the poison can be immediately treated by rubbing the area with the leaves or the bark of the Becerra, Sirumba tree. Parts of this tree offer chemical compounds that quickly neutralize the poison from the Shechem tree, allowing the human body's uncomfortable reaction to stop. The compounds in the shaka tree, leaves and bark, also act as an anti-inflammatory and assist in the reduction of itching and swelling resulting from the poison. Francis of Assisi, the saint of the people, was born to the good life and to beautiful things. The sight of any illness, disease, and especially the disfigurement of leprosy, absolutely nauseated him. Yet one day he felt the calling to climb off his horse and embrace a leper, and in his own words, what had been exceedingly bitter became something sweet. I think that each one of us has a leper inside of us, something that shames us, something we try to hide. Often it will be something that nauseates us in other people. This is always the place to start looking. Some secret vice or addiction, perhaps a sexual perversion that grips our fantasy moments. When we embrace the secret leper within us, a wonderful opportunity opens up to us. It begins as we climb off our horse and stand humbly before the other acknowledging our need of an antidote to the poison within us that threatens to destroy us. Decades research has shown that placebos, that sham treatments with no active ingredients, can ease pain and actually cure disease and other physical ailments. Neuroscience investigations have shown that our own worldview is often incomplete and inaccurate, containing both amounts of delusion and illusion. It is these delusions and illusions that are often responsible for the expectations that are the cause of our sufferings. For St. Francis, the journey to a new vision of the world was precisely through the darkness and suffering of blindness, as paradoxically he suddenly came to see as God sees, and was able to write that wonderful and beautiful canticle of the creatures. Most High, All-Powerful, Good Lord, Yours are the praises, the glory, and the honor, and all blessing. To you alone, Most High, do they belong, and no human is worthy to mention your name. Praised be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Brother Son, who is the day and through whom you give us light. He is beautiful and radiant with great splendor, and bears a likeness to you, Most High One. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars. In heaven you form them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Wind, and through the air cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather, through whom you give sustenance to your creatures. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water, who is very useful and humble, and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night and he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us. 
and who produces various fruit with coloured flowers and herbs. Praise be you, my Lord, to those you give pardon for your love, and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for by you, Most High, shall they be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, to our sister bodily death, from whom no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are those whose death will find in you most holy woe, for the second death shall do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks, and serve him with great humility. Jesus is indeed the antidote to the poison tree. The God of beginnings and our first ancestor is portrayed as neither a warrior nor a king nor a vigil judge, but firstly as a gardener, a planter, a protector, and a nurturer of life. It is into a garden that God has planted that our first parents are invited to work with God in this endeavor of tending the earth. God is the planter of those great trees of Eden that gives both knowledge and life. God also becomes in Jesus on the tree of the cross, the antidote to that poison that courses through the blood of our common ancestry. God offers us in its stead the food of eternal life. These are the trees that are entwined with the cross of healing and the wooden staff of potency that brings water into the desert and protection against corruption. The cosmological drama of Genesis defines humanity made in the image and likeness of God, having intellect, will and freedom, and being creative and eternal. This necessitates that humanity also is free, creator, creative, having knowledge and eternal life. The great temptation for us, the delusion of self-sufficiency, because of pride, greed and deceit, leads to cutting ourselves off as images from that original on which we absolutely depend. We grasp for ourselves that which can only freely be given and shared by God. This leads naturally to a non-image. This is extinction, an annihilation which is death. This leads on to the tale of disordered relationships between people, with man ruling over woman, between humanity and creation, in disorder and conflict. This is the echo of the systematic degrading of humanity's dignity by being defined as commodities, workers, mere consumers. This comes about after the dust of the earth to which humanity is destined, receives the curse through the blood of Abel, the first murder victim. The story of Cain and Abel is the first time that sin is mentioned in scriptures through which poison enters into our bloodstream. An image freed of God no longer has any reality, no substance. It was Thomas Merton who noted that as long as you have to defend the imaginary self that we think is important, we lose our peace of heart. As soon as we compare that shadow with the shadows of other people, we lose all our joy because we have begun to trade in unrealities and there's never any joy in things that do not exist. In hum humility is the greatest freedom. We cannot demand, we cannot earn, nor can we steal the antidote to the poison that assails us in society. We must embrace the shadow and the leper within and present this at the tree of healing so that we may open ourselves to sharing in God's very life. All that is required from our side is an acknowledgement of the need of God that nothing else can fulfill, and an urgent desire within. The joy of this day in our Lenten journey is a promise that God also desires our healing. God desires our flourishing, desires our life in union with his own eternal being. The God of mercy is a gardener who is neither critical judge nor punitive spectator to our sufferings and to our longing. 
Let us therefore approach the light in truth and receive the life of the age that is promised by Jesus. May the Lord grant you his peace.